The silver green of the olive trees. I was gonna go towards other stuff, but actually that's kind of like enough. Like the silver green of the olive trees is where this winery is. Castelnuovo is a Roman village, so like 2000 years old, on the eastern side of the appellation of the Pino Grigio delle Venezie, next to the Garda Lake. It's 1958 when this cop, a small cop of 11 people, was born. And today there is 200 of them, over a thousand hectares of vineyards. But going back to the olive trees, what do they have to do with vineyards? Everything. This is the northernmost area for the olive to be able to grow. So it's like a Mediterranean, the most in part of the Mediterranean. Let me remind you, the Alps are protecting this area from the northern east winds. It's time to go to East Wine though, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a major expectation. There is um, um, lime tangerine. That's what I was getting. It's tangerine. It's not lime. Sorry. Just scratch. take the lime out. It's tangerine and lemons. With a touch of broom flowers. And uh, something that is go goes towards the toasted almonds. Palette is on the reactive acidity. In this case, it's all about the lemon juice and uh, not too long, not too lingering. This is something to enjoy fresh and steady with, uh, with a nice uh, crayfish salad. How about that? Picture yourself, I was gonna say, picture yourself in a boat on a river. Well, you can picture yourself this time. You could be in a boat, you could be in a river, because as you know, Pinot Grigio de Venezia is all about boats and rivers and seas and, and lakes. In this case, we are in the Garden of Venice, where the beautiful 16th century villas that Palladio has designed for the rich people of Venice, the rich families of Venice, are still there today. All decorated with these beautiful golden lines and uh, hypnotic frescoes. Well, this is exactly what Pinot Grigio La Marca comes from. And I think right now, I feel like I want to have a glass of it. <laughs> what a sound. How do you feel? Fancy a glass with me? Let's check this Pinot Grigio out. I think it's a 2019. Ripe fruit, ripe pears. Um, ripe pears, pineapple, and passion fruit. Very aromatic pinot. Pretty kind of like sweet, round, mellow. There's a slightly residual sugar, not too much. Um, there is almost like a marshmallow, a cinnamon, and quince finish to the wine. It is 1946 when Mr. Epifanio Dal Bianco puts together the winery Mazottina. We are in the super smooth rolling hills of Conegliano that is very famous out there in the world, maybe not many people know, but in 1876, maybe one of the world's first wine schools was ever put together. But not like wine school where you teach to learn about how to taste wine, I'm talking about winemakers school. La Scuola Enologica di Conegliano is like one of those places without which there wouldn't be fine wines in the planet. Now, I'm curious to go check out this wine that is, the name on the label you'll find is Dorso Duro ai Palazzi. The vintage is 2019, it's time to have a drop. Very clear, bright and transparent Pinot. Very perfumed. Uh, in this case, I've got some like dry roses. A little bit of that like freshly uh, lime, the peel, the lime peel. And a sea breeze. That is something that is more to the wine than just the fruit and the floral. So you have a combination of uh, ripeness. So the fruit that has come in the cellar is very ripe, you can tell. There is lots of uh, generous sweet fruit. But at the same time, you see what I'm going through is acidity. So acidity is pretty high. I think the expectations of this wine is super food friendly. 
above all of course with the fatty stuff uh, whether it's fatty fish you know what here it'd be good some uh, uh, frittura mista man I'm almost in the mood for it right now Tomasi, who doesn't know Tomasi? One of uh, Italy's most famous uh, Italian wine families. These guys have been in business from 1902, right at the beginning of the last century. Uh, it's actually a big family. There's like uh, 10, 10 people at least working in the Tomasi vineyards. They have lots of different vineyards ar around Italy, but this Pinot Grigio is right near the Verona area. So with this Tommasi Pinot Grigio delle Venezia, there is one extra element that I'm very curious to go check it out with you. As you can see here, maybe you can, maybe not, is Le Rosse. Le Rosse is the name of a single vineyard, so the name of the crew, and I'm very curious to check out whether this is gonna add up, as I am assuming it is, more complexity to the wine. Well, on the nose, there is beautiful uh, um, glazed uh, toasted almonds, uh, floral like jasmine flowers, not too much, like you know jasmine can be very powerful but there is a, a kind of aromatic flower and, uh, and some citrus element, uh, more of, um, of tangent, like, uh, like, like uh, orange blossoms, that's what it is, it's not, it's not jasmine, it's orange blossoms. I like the fact that the wine is sweet, very generous ripe sweet fruit, uh, white fruit with lots of contrasted acidity, and that's what I like. I was gonna say, I like the fact that the wine goes down really quickly down to your throat, which means that it is good drinkability, but at the same time, lots of volumes and creaminess to this Pinot Grigio. I like to say Pinot Grigio. In Italy we say Pinot Grigio. What do you think this is? It's a stock of a vine. It's maybe a profile of a wine glass. Or it could be a branch of a river. It is the three of them together. Uh, Ramushella has chosen this uh, uh, label to show that the, one of the branches of Tagliamento, so the far east part of the Appellation, uh, and the importance of the water, as you remember, in Pinot Grigio de Venezia, water is paramount for making summers cooler and winters milder. This winery co-op was born in 1959. There used to be 21 winemakers back then. There is 150 of them today, over something around 130, 140 hectares. Let's go check the Pinot Grigio out. Bear in mind that with Ramoscello, we're tasting a 2018 Pinot Grigio. So, you know, let's see what happens with a little bit of an extra year of aging. The wine becomes interesting. The wine becomes spicier, uh, more on the nutmeg and uh, licorice uh, side of aromas and chamomile tea. But also in the fruit side, I get, uh, what's the name of uh, persimmon? And uh, there is another fruit that I can't remember right now, but I'll tell you another time. <laughs> it's like a, a Japanese fruit that is grown in Italy, it's orange with very, a very smooth skin. Nespola in Italiano. I don't know in English, guys. I cannot know everything. Let's go check on the mouth. Medler. That's what it is. Medler. This, the, the, what's in Italian? <laughs> My brain splits in two. Anyway, Medler is the orange. You can't laugh. <laughs> Medler is the uh, orange looking uh, fruit. And once again on the palate, you know, like the Medler has got this funny business of having lots of juiciness, but a little bit of astringency, which I'm having right now. There is also like a walnut finish um, and, a, and a little bit of um, um, uh, acidity juicy acidity that reminds me exactly of that fruit. Man, that was quite interesting though. 1607, the 7th of December. This is when Domenico Armani is signing for the property. This document, you can find it in Trento today. Albino is the generation, is the current generation, Albino Armani, that is running the show in this beautiful area 
Uh, the vineyards are basically start from the mountain of Montevaldo and they go all the way down towards the Adige River. Once again, Adige is maybe one of the westernmost rivers of the Pino Grigio delle Venezia appellation and very close to the Lake Garda as well. So lots of winds once again during the afternoon like at two o'clock there is always this beautiful wind that comes from the Garda River but also you have the cool winds of the mountains to refresh summers. Albino is a very thorough winemaker. Actually Albino and Egle, his wife, uh, they are very uh, precise uh, kind of winemakers so I'm expecting from their Pinot Grigio to be very spot on with very clean fruit. Let's check it out together. On the nose there is a blend of um, Mediterranean flower, like spring flowers, but also I was gonna say Mediterranean herbs flowers. You know, like when uh, rosemary, like right now, uh, rose, like we just like at the beginning, of the, like in the middle of the spring, rosemary is having like flowers popping out, and if you smell those, they're beautiful. Actually, talking about rosemary, there is a sage. Talking about spices, like uh, herbs, there is a sage herbaceous character. I found it. That's what I was looking for. Herbaceousness. You know what happens when you're tasting wine? You know you have to speed out, but there is a drop that goes straight into your throat. That's energy. As is salinity, sapidity energy, this Pinot Grigio has got a more of a mountainy character. You can tell by the verticality of the wine and uh, and a slightly more austere character. And in the end though, there is an oiliness and a apricot. So like very beautiful ripe fruit with a super crunchy finish. Talking about Pinot Grigio delle Venezie, we said that one of the key features is history. Italian major history. Palladio, one of the most famous architects, has been drawing and building so many of these beautiful villas stretching from Venice all the way up to Verona. Well, guess what? Villa Santa Sofia Winery is one of those that is set in a 1560 original Villa Palladiana. Although the villa is from the 1560, the winery was built in 1811. Nowadays is roughly 50 hectares. Nowadays is roughly 50 hectares and the Bignoni family are taking care of business. Let's see how much of the beautiful Palladian architecture we can find in this one. So let's check this Santa Sofia Pinot Grigio delle Venezie. And so it's with these herbaceous notes and the um, remind and it's, so it's with this herbaceousness on the palate and the floral scent on the nose that gives me the idea of an aromatic style Pinot Grigio in this case that could be good just like as an aperitif to go with different kind of canopies. Um, that's one of the uh, moments when Pinot Grigio actually shows its best. So in this case I'd, I'd like just to uh, pinpoint how we have like some of the lighter style Pinot Grigio, relative, relatively neutral. Then we have the Pinot Grigio with more mature fruit, Pinot Grigio with spiciness, but also this style with more of the floral and herbaceous character. It's something that you could expect from a Pinot Grigio. Remember, Pinot Grigio variety is a red variety with a white color very often. So you have more complexity than you think. I was almost forgetting. Talking about the Consorzio delle Venezie, the DOC delle Venezie appellation. Well, first of all, you get to know that the world of Pinot Grigio, the vineyards of Pinot Grigio in the planet, are basically 50% almost in Italy. And guess what? 85% of it are in delle Venezie appellation. How many winemakers produce Pinot Grigio in this area? There is 324 of them and 39 are cops. So within the cops, there is even more winemaker. So in other words, there's in hundreds of winemakers that produce this beautiful white wine of Italy, by the way, the most recognized Italian variety. In the past, this wine used to be pretty like dilute and in the 90s was like a very small percentage of vines was Pinot Grigio, roughly was 3,000 hectares. Today is 25, 26,000 hectares of Pinot Grigio. And right now, this Pinot Grigio is way more fruit driven, way more complexity, above all, way more length. In the past, it was kind of dilute and neutral. Right now, there is spices, there is uh, um, 
minerality and way more complexity. Basically, this appellation has brought a brand new revolution. As of 2017, this is how young the consortium is, by the way, the largest consortium in Italy, across three regions, Trentino, Veneto and Friuli. Boom! Where is the revolution? The revolution is the fact that there is vineyards, new vineyard management, young entrepreneurs, young vigneron. They're all there making sure that the world can drink the delicious Pinot Grigio delle Venezie. Are you wondering what to pair with your Pinot Grigio? Well, there's plenty ways to go. First of all, Pinot Grigio with its spiciness, natural spiciness is perfect with an aperitivo moment. That's, uh, I think, the, bo the best you can do. So like little nibbles of, of course, like fried fish, uh, sushi, guacamole and chips. I mean, that kind of stuff. I think there is no better variety, no better wine than Pinot Grigio delle Venezie to go for. Do you want to have pasta with Pinot Grigio? Of course you should have pasta. It's an Italian product at the end of the day. So, pasta. Well, with pasta, I would be quite cautious with going, going to, with, I would go with some light sauces. You know, like you want to go like light fish sauce or you can go like some pasta with veggies, beautiful risotto that you can have it with, you know, like a, a beautiful risotto, like because of the cheese, the fatness of the cheese, the acidity of Pinot Grigio is going to cut through it and make it as a perfect food companion. I would refrain from heavy ragu sauces or risotto with, I don't know, like bone marrow risotto. That could be a little bit too much. You need something with heavier body. Main course? Well, main course you can work with, you know, like white meat, chicken, of course fish, but not fish that you're gonna cook for too long. You want something that is like lightly like steamed or baked and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil, dash of lemon, salt, boom, off you go. Pinot Grigio is basically the ultimate Italian white wine. And what is the Italian kitchen about? Simplicity. One, two, maybe three ingredients and off you go.